dinosaurs. The Triceratops, the Velociraptor, Apatosaurus, Pterodactyl, Stegosaurus, and of course the Tyrannosaurus Rex. When I was little, I was obsessed with dinosaurs. I spent hours brought on my bedroom floor poring over hardcover books on dinosaurs that my parents had bought for me. I memorized my favorite dinosaurs by name, identifying characteristics, and time period. I dressed up as a dinosaur for Halloween, accompanied by a mouse princess and a knight in shining armor. When I was little, I was obsessed with dinosaurs. Dinosaurs taught me how to ask questions. Dinosaurs made me curious, stimulating my youthful mind. Who, what, where, why, when, how? What would happen if? Can I? Will it? What caused? Why, why, why? I asked my parents, my teachers, librarians, I consulted my books. Sometimes I'd find the answer on the first try. Sometimes I'd have to rephrase the question, keep looking, keep asking, staying curious. Sometimes my questions would get me in trouble. One Sunday after my mother had picked me up from church school, I asked her one of those questions that small children are really not supposed to ask in church. I guess we had been thinking about how God had created the, the world in seven days. And I'd been dreaming about dinosaurs during the night. And my little brain put the two of them together and I asked, why are there no dinosaurs in the Bible? My mother had no reaction. I mean, what would be your thought process if a six-year-old had asked you that question? So I went home and I set out to find an answer. I opened my books, an encyclopedia on dinosaurs on one side and my children's Bible on the other side. And I asked questions, who, what, where, when, why, how? And each answer led to a new question. I was not frustrated with not having a clear answer all the time. It just gave me more energy more determination to work my way through these questions. And in the end, I decided that dinosaurs existed a very long time ago, that my favorite dinosaur was definitely the pterodactyl, and wandered downstairs for lunch. But looking back on that moment, I realized that the question I asked my mother and myself did have an answer. After that day, I stopped paying attention in church school. And to be honest, I was only there for the food. So why am I telling this story, apart from revealing the fact that I had more books than friends from a pretty early age? I'm telling this story because dinosaurs taught me the importance of unraveling mysteries one question at a time. Dinosaurs taught me that the world is full of questions just waiting to be answered. Dinosaurs taught me the importance of having a passion and taking pride in being the expert among your peer, your family, on a particular topic. Let's look at this in a completely different way. <coughs> Imagine holding a tangled ball of yarn. There are knots on either end, and in the mess of yarn, you see that the knots are made of more knots. Yarn can represent anything, any topic that you're passionate about. Dinosaurs, climate change, civil rights, civic engagement, sports and athlete, poetry, human rights, archaeology, any topic that you can and want to ask hundreds of questions about. The knots of yarn represent these questions. When we're given the task of untangling this ball of yarn, untangling our questions, we get frustrated and overwhelmed. It's a complete mess. <coughs> but when we look closer at each individual knot to be untied, at each individual question that will lead us to detailed answers, we start to realize patterns. We start to make progress. We ask who, what, where, when, why, how? We become our younger selves. There is no limit to our curiosity or exquisitiveness. There is no limit to our questions. It's hard to maintain this mindset. Without our youthful energy, sometimes it's just easier to ask the questions our professors, our friends, our community expects us to ask. But I encourage you to chase after your dreams. Chase after those questions that you left and answered as a little child. We've grown so much more in size and intellect. Now it's time to find your passion. When I was little, I was passionate about dinosaurs. When I was in kindergarten, on rainy or snowy days, our class would stay indoors to color or play with toys. And I always ran towards the box filled with small plastic dinosaurs. No boy ever challenged me for that treasure chest of delight, 
must have been that possessive way I created it as I walked to my side of the room. Sometimes I get so absorbed with the creation of dinosaur tales that I would unconsciously add sound effects. Roars that the Tyrannosaurus Rex as he massacred a herd of Apatosaurus. Grrrs at the Triceratops as he leapt over a desk on the way to reunite with his family. And the teacher would come over, and in that condescending tone, Hannah, it's quiet time. And I would stare at her with blank eyes and wondered if she had ever played with dinosaurs.